Welcome back to MediClass. Today we shall learn about biological width. In order to maintain healthy anatomic relation, the tooth and the implant are surrounded by a defensive barrier, which is also called as a natural seal or biological width. This biological width protects the underlying bone from the invading bacteria and foreign materials and prevents the spread of disease and maintains the health. So what is biological width? The biological width is the vertical dimension of the dentogingival complex which comprises of the junctional epithelium and the connective tissue attachment. Definition of biological width is the dimension of the soft tissue which is attached to the portion of the tooth coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone. It can also be defined as the physiologic dimension of the junctional epithelium and connective tissue attachment above the crest of the alveolar bone. Gargiulo in 1961 in a cadaveric study estimated the histologic dimensions of the dentogingival unit. It comprises of the gingival sulcus, the junctional epithelium extending from the base of the gingival sulcus apically, and the connective tissue attachment extending from the base of the junctional epithelium to the crest of the alveolar bone. Together they form a dentogingival unit. However, the junctional epithelium and the connective tissue attachment together form a functional unit which is called as the biological width. So the biological width have particular dimensions. The gingival sulcus was estimated to be 0.69 mm, the junctional epithelium 0.97 mm and the connective tissue attachment 1.07 mm. So the total length of the biological width is 2.04 mm. Clinically, biological width is assumed to be 2 mm in length. Similar to the tooth, biological width also exists around dental implants. It consists of a sulcus, a junctional epithelium and the connective tissue fibers. These connective tissue fibers are oriented parallel to the implant as opposed to the tooth which are oriented perpendicularly. There is a difference between the biological width existing around a tooth and an implant. This is the diagrammatic representation of the epithelial attachment and the connective tissue attachment around a tooth and this represents the epithelial and the connective tissue attachment around a dental implant. The probing depth around a tooth is around 2 to 3 mm. However, around an implant, it is around 3 to 5 mm. The connective tissue component of a tooth has low collagen level but a higher fibroblast content. However, around an implant, there are more collagen fibers and less fibroblasts. The vascular supply around a tooth is more as it has PDL and less around an implant as it lacks the presence of PDL. The connective tissue fibers are oriented perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and attaches onto the cementum. However, the connective tissue fibers around an implant are oriented parallel to the implant. The junctional epithelium around the tooth arises from the reduced enamel epithelium and that around an implant arises from the adjacent oral epithelium. The junctional epithelium is less permeable around a tooth and more permeable around an implant. Junctional epithelium around a tooth has high regenerative capacity compared to the one around a dental implant and the junctional epithelium around tooth is well attached compared to the junctional epithelium around an implant which is poorly attached. So what is the role of biological width? It preserves the health of the gingival tissues, it removes any irritation that might damage the periodontium and it controls the gingival form around the restorations. So there are two methods of evaluation of biological width. One is the clinical method and second is the radiographic. Clinical method involves probing under anesthesia to the bone level which is also called as bone sounding. It is performed on teeth with healthy gingiva. The measurement is performed from the crest of the alveolar bone to the marginal gingiva and the sulcus depth is subtracted from the total length. When measurements are less than 2 mm, it is considered that the biological width is violated. Radiographically, biological width can be detected at the interproximal site. This x-ray represents the crest of the alveolar bone and the restorative margins which are closely placed to each other depicting biologic width violation. However, it is difficult to locate biological width around the mesofacial and the distofacial line angles of the teeth. Hence, a newer technique called parallel profile radiography was introduced. It involves placement of gutta percha points into the sulcus along with a lead foil and paralleling technique was used to perform radiographs with the films placed laterally. With the help of digital image and softwares, the biological width around the tooth, mainly in the anteriors and the facial aspects, can be examined. When the biologic width is encroached upon by caries or restorations, the periodontium reacts by creating room between the alveolar bone and the restorative margin to allow space for tissue attachment. 
In this image, you can see the margins of the restoration are located subgingivally into the biological width, causing its violation. Biological width violation can be seen clinically as gingival inflammation, bleeding on probing, increased probing depth due to bone loss, gingival recession, and at times gingival hyperplasia. So, what is the importance of biologic width? Biologic width violation can occur during restoration of tooth that was fractured or being carious near the alveolar crest, and also subgingival burying of restoration due to aesthetic concern can cause biological width violation. It is important to know that the integrity of biological width is a necessary step in restorative and prosthetic rehabilitation, which helps to maintain and obtain healthy soft tissues. It was suggested by Ingber that a minimum of 3 mm were required to restore the margins of the alveolar crest to permit adequate healing and restoration of the tooth. In this image, you can see the margins of the restoration are placed subgingivally without violating the biological width and a safe distance of 3 mm is maintained from the crest of alveolar bone to the margin of the restoration. So margin placement can either be supragingival, equigingival or subgingival. Supragingival margins are placed in unesthetic areas. However, they have favorable impact on the periodontium. Equigingival margins were considered to be plaque retentive and causing greater gingival inflammation. However, due to introduction of new materials, they are considered well tolerated and smooth polished surface can be produced. Subgingival restoration are difficult to access and can violate biological width. There are certain categories of biological width which can help us determine which types of restorative margins could be placed on the tooth. They are normal crest, where the mid facial distance from the crest of the gingiva to the alveolar crest is about 3 mm and proximally 3 to 4.5 mm. High crest, where the mid facial dimensions are less than 3 mm and proximal dimensions also less than 3 mm. In a low crest, the mid facial dimensions are more than 3 mm from the crest of the alveolar bone to the marginal gingiva. Also, the proximal dimensions are more than 4.5 mm. So, in case of a normal crest, it is suggested to place the gingival margins 0.5 mm into the gingival sulcus. For a high crest, flap reflection and osseous recontouring is suggested. For a low crest, it is advised to perform gingivectomy procedures and to re-establish biological width. Treatment to restore biological width Biological width violation can be corrected either by surgical crown lengthening, a pikily reposition flap, or orthodontic techniques. Surgical crown lending involves removal of soft tissue by a process called gingivectomy or it could involve removal of both soft tissue and alveolar bone by a process called a pikely displaced flap. This clinical picture represents lack of sufficient tooth structure and involvement of the biological width. A flap reflection and osseous recontouring provides sufficient height and restoration of the biological width which is followed by a placement of permanent restoration. Reduction of soft tissue alone in case of adequate width of attached gingiva can be performed by procedure called gingivectomy or flap technique. This image shows excessive gingival tissue can be cut off and sufficient height of 3 mm from the gingival margin to the alveolar crest can create proper biological width. In case of inadequate attached gingiva, flap reflection and alveolar bone recontouring can be performed to create adequate width of attached gingiva. It is suggested that a 1 mm of sound tooth structure should be maintained above the gingival margin in order to maintain margin placement and retention of the restoration. Orthodontic extrusion. If the biological width violation is on the interproximal side or if the violation is across the facial surface and the gingival tissue level is correct, orthodontic extrusion is indicated. It can either be performed by applying low orthodontic forces or rapid orthodontic forces. So to summarize, biological width is a soft tissue dimension coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone. It is the junctional epithelium with the connected tissue attachment which clinically measures up to 2 mm. It is present both around the tooth and the dental implant. It maintains the health of the periodontal tissues around tooth and the dental implant. It can be evaluated by clinical and radiographic methods. Biological width violation occurs during treatment of subgingival caries, fractured tooth and subgingival margins of the restoration. Correction of biological width violation can be performed using surgical crown lending or orthodontic extrusion. You can find link to the MCQs in the description and you can attempt those MCQs and find out how much you learned about the topic. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for update on new videos. So see you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.